it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Now for those who don't know, Your Past is a Gift is a book that I've written. It was published about two years ago. You can get it, you know, through Amazon or Barnes and Noble, the book depository, any bookshop. <laughs> just look online and you can even get an ebook. So, you know, you can just read it off your computer and get a good idea to how to improve your own life, okay, following the steps that I've taken in my book. So I wanted to follow on from the previous video because some of us, we grow up, you know, and I wasn't one of them, but I've witnessed it with my dad, where he had both parents and neither of them were allowed to express love for him or all his, you know, siblings, because there were so many of them and he was the youngest. But the important thing to take away was that he was not shown love like you know yeah he had food on the table when they could put food on the table you know he, they had a very very poor childhood very poor third world country upbringing you know some years it'd be freezing winter and he wouldn't have shoes or his shoes would have you know holes in the bottom and his feet would be freezing things like this you know not enough clothes or clothes too small or clothes you know anyway not an adequate clothing to keep warm in winter things like that so you know, his parents did the best they could. You know, he lived out on a farm, you know, so they were farmers and they did absolutely the best that they could for him. But at the time, it was also thought a sign of weakness, especially towards boys, to express love, to show, you know, to give a cuddle, to kiss them, to any tactile, you know, expression of I love you, or to even look at them in a loving way, you know, was considered wrong because they thought that would make them grow up to be weak you know not not strong and a man needs to be strong these were the beliefs you know that were passed down so i saw in him how someone can turn that around you know and that's what i want to create with this video now you can know within yourself how you would have liked to have been treated all the things that you would have liked to have received you know within yourself that you would have loved to have been cuddled occasionally or held. So that you can feel that love from the other person. You know, a kiss on the cheek or a kiss on the forehead. Or I mean, I can't get enough of kissing my six-year-old anywhere. On the back of the head, you know, on the elbow, on the, anywhere, on the back of the head. <laughs> They're all expressions of, I love you. You're so special to me, you know. Uh, my dad, he used to hold my hand a lot and his hand was so big. He had these big chunky hands, you know, and my hand would get lost inside this huge hand, but I just felt so safe and protected and uh, imagining him thinking, I will never let anything bad happen to you. I will always protect you. I will always keep you safe. You know, these are all the things that I imagine now as a parent would be going through his mind with this massive hand holding this tiny little hand inside. You know, there's so many ways that we can express love. You know, my mum used to, because she didn't know how to express it in all those obvious ways, she would express it through her food, through her cooking, through doing things for you, you know? Um, that was her way of expressing her love. So there are so many different ways you know but I think it's very important that whichever way you decide to express the love that the other person knows you know because now I look back on it and I see all the things that my mum did to express her love but growing up I honestly believed that she didn't love me she loved my sister it was obvious you know because of all the attention that she would spend on my sister and all the things that she would do with my sister but I didn't feel that she loved me because her expression, you know, how she expressed her love for my sister and how she expressed it for me were two very completely different ways. And I know that we're two very completely different people. Our personalities are very different as well. So what I want you to think about firstly, and most of all, is how you would have liked to have been treated. The, the ways that you would have liked for either of those adults to have expressed their love for you and then there's nothing stopping you from giving yourself that from looking at that little child that's yearning 
for someone to notice that you're there, that's yearning for you, you know, to say something and someone's going to listen and someone's going to care that you have something to say, that you want to be heard, you want to be seen. You can start doing that for that little child because it's still in there. It's still in there, it's still inside of you. You are still in there. That little child is still in there and it's still hurting. And it's not until you start to give it, that child, all those things that you so desperately needed. And you, that's, that's what's called loving yourself. And you start giving yourself exactly what you need. Because you have to understand those adults around you, they didn't know how to. They never had it and they didn't know how to give it to you. It's not because of you or who you are. No matter what they said to you, it's not because of you. It's because of them and their experiences. But today, and I've been through that in a lot of videos, so you can go back and listen to all of that. Today it's about you giving to yourself what you need. Giving it to yourself, giving yourself time to sit and enjoy a book. Even if it's 10 pages a day that you can get lost in a beautiful book or in a beautiful piece of music or something that fills you with love and makes you happy, even if it's just for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever time you can set aside that's just for you to nourish that little soul, that little child inside and give it your love. Because until you can completely love who you are and accept who you are, and I'm going to go into this in the next one, how we can be our worst critics. Sometimes we're the ones and we judge ourselves so harshly all the time, you know, but that also comes from way back there. So we'll talk about that in the next one. And hopefully you can start moving away from talking to yourself that way and treating yourself that way. Let's go into it, yeah, in the next video. I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.